You, like me, were away last week. This thing hit on Friday. But give me your thoughts now that we've heard from Attorney General Barr. Well, I think a couple of big points here that may seem obvious. But number one, it's a relief, frankly, that there wasn't any collusion with Russia. I mean, I don't care what your feelings are about President Trump. Did we really want a situation where there were allegations that our president was essentially some kind of Russian asset? That we were living in some kind of real life Manchurian candidate environment where we would have more years of impeachment proceedings and lawsuits and, you know, clouds over the White House. I think it's great that that's, that's all resolved. And secondly, I think it's really significant that, again, whatever you think about Trump per se, the process has worked. The FBI did its job. The Justice Department did its job. A special counsel was appointed. He did his job. I think he deserves huge credit for the way he handled this, especially given the attacks he was under. Um, he reached a credible conclusion. I haven't heard anyone attacking him as being partisan, biased, or not thorough, God knows. And I think that is a tremendous credit to the... You know, now, we have yet to see the actual report. It's unclear whether we will in its entirety, though Attorney General Barr indicates at least we'll see more of it. But the obstruction charge yes. and the decision by the Attorney General not to pursue it. Well, that is still... There's some big questions about that. I think, first of all... Um, the Mueller report itself didn't reach any conclusion about that. And the book I'm working on really does explore the dynamics of the relationship between law enforcement and the president. And, you know, bear in mind, the president is the chief law enforcement officer in this country, whether you like it or not. And that relationship, it's, there's some very difficult issues about there about what would constitute obstruction. Now, that said, for Barr to say you can't have obstruction unless there's an underlying crime really makes no sense at all. I mean, throughout history, there have been many cases of obstruction where people lied or obstructed, covered up evidence, not because there was a crime, but because there was something embarrassing, there was something damaging, there was potential civil liability. You know, situations, need I mention it, of illicit sexual relationships, that has frequently been mm -hmm. a topic where there has been obstruction of justice, and many, many people have been charged with perjury and with obstruction of justice where there was no actual crime. Just to take one example, Martha Stewart was, was convicted of making false statements even though she was not charged with insider trading the crime underlying it. So I don't really think that holds up for analysis, but for the time being, Barr is the attorney general. He's the chief, you know, under Trump, he's the chief law enforcement officer. There's not going to be any charges from the Justice Department. That, to me, takes that off the table, at least through 2020. 2020. And I don't see any impeachment without action from the Justice Department. John Harwood, what do the Democrats do next? Well, first of all, uh, guys, I uh, agree with Jim uh, uh, on both the issue of uh, special counsel Mueller deserving praise, and secondly, that it's a relief for the country that he did not find evidence of collusion. And I agree with him not only because he used to uh, decide whether my stories went on the front page of the Wall Street Journal, uh, but what I would say is that Democrats now have a choice of whether they act on their beliefs. You know, they're complaining about Bill Barr uh, having made the judgment that Jim just alluded to that uh, there, there is not an obstruction crime that can be prosecuted. Uh, irrespective of whether you believe the Justice Department can or cannot prosecute the president. But we all knew that the Justice Department, uh, that Robert Mueller was inclined not to uh, uh, believe that he could indict the president. There's every reason, was every reason to think that uh, Bill Barr would not do that either. So the same remedy for Democrats that existed before this report came out exists for them now, and that is through the impeachment process. It is harder uh, and the, uh, the very likely absence of any uh, Republican support makes it riskier. But if they believe, if Democrats believe that the president, despite the fact that Robert Mueller couldn't establish uh, collusion for various other reasons, if they believe he should be impeached, they still have that option. It's just more dangerous. And so their beliefs are going to be put to the test. Um, Jim... Has there been damage done overall to A, rule of law, B, Justice Department in terms of its place uh, in our government, given the repeated attacks from the Trump administration? Well, obviously, we're going to have to wait and see. But I do feel we have been in a virtually unprecedented situation where the White House has been at war with the two principal law enforcement agencies that the White House oversees, the Department of Justice and the FBI. Certainly in my lifetime, I can't remember something like this. Even in, I mean, Watergate probably is what, what came the closest, where there was direct White House interference 
uh, with the Justice Department, but even then, not the FBI. The FBI has been stood, stood apart, and I've never in my lifetime seen the kind of attacks that have been leveled there. That is going to make, the danger is that's going to make the heads of the Justice Department and the FBI very wary about crossing the White House, which is not a healthy state of affairs. They do need to be independent. They need to be free of political interference, and the public has to have trust in them. And the White House has been hammering it that day in and day out. And by the way, that's not going to stop now. In fact, I think it may only intensify. I'm already hearing the drum beats that we've got to look more into. And by the way, I, I agree we ought to get to the bottom of all these things. A lot of this should be made public. That's what I'm trying to do in my book. But this constant drumbeat that now there was a sinister uh, conspiracy inside the U.S. government, that is being pounded even harder. And until yeah. these issues are resolved, it's going to sow mistrust. I don't think it is healthy for law enforcement in this country. I mean, finally, John, just to bring it back to, to some of our focus, investors, are fixated on the relationship between President Xi and President Trump. Does this change the calculus at all? Does it give the president more leverage in these high stakes negotiations that are actually going on at a high level this week in Beijing? I don't think so. It was always unlikely that the president was going to be removed from office uh, before the end of his term, although it was a possibility and remains a, a slimmer possibility now. But I think both leaders want to get a trade deal and will get a trade deal for the reason that each of them is under economic pressure. Uh, the Chinese economy is weakening. We've seen that. The U.S. economy is slowing down. We had the yield curve invert on uh, Friday. They're mounting fears of potential recession, say, by 2020. That gives very good uh, reason for these two sides to come together and at least calm the trade tensions, even if they don't resolve any of the structural uh, changes that the United States is demanding.